Welcome back to the 2018 Golf Industry Show here in San Antonio, Texas. I'm on the GCSA Live Stadium. I was going to say stadium stage in the inside the ropes. And right before you came, Tim, we were talking to the people to put this all together. It's been quite a venue, really interesting being here, all brought to us by Lebanon Turf. I'm already talking casually to you because we've known each other quite a while. I'll give you a big congratulations for the Green Section Record Award, the USGA Green Section Record Award. Well deserved, long time coming. And, and um, I'm happy to be in the club now, a new uh, owner of the President's Award for Environmental Stewardship. So we should get hats. You see the architect jackets? You see Congrats. those goofy things those guys wear? Congratulations Thank to you, Thank you very Frank. much, Tim. It's a pleasure chatting with you about what I know has been near and dear to your heart for a number of years now. I got to visit you at Old Collier uh, for the 15 years that you were there managing a variety of different paspalums, right? You had a number, of a number of paspalums on that property and developed the, the ability to see an issue and adapt to it. I know we're going to get to sort of the meat of that, how important skilled management is for this grass, but we're talking about platinum. Uh, how is it different than the other paspalums that are on the market? It's got probably the best low light intensity tolerance. That means cloudy weather. It's the, it's the only pass family that grows vertically straight up. Okay. It's got very low nitrogen requirements. It probably has the best salinity tolerance of any of the pass okay. and has because of its rhizomes, has really rapid divot recovery. So, so early phases of pass you know, when Ronnie first started, that when he came into the breeding of this grass, right? The early ones, um, Salam was Salam. The, one, the original one you planted and, and at CIL 2000. And CIL 2000. And then there's been a few others that have come out and around. Um, what would, I mean, on the Bermuda side, I was talking to Brian Schwartz at the University of Georgia about a, a project in the South, and I was talking about Bermuda grasses for the fairways, and he said, Tiff Tough. And I said, What about this Tiff? He says, You know, as soon as we shut the water off, as soon as we did this, this grass did well, right? Is, and he says it's the first real change he's seen in, since 419, the only improvement, big real change in it. Is platinum that kind of change for Paspalum? Is, it, is, it, is, is the last one they did here and this platinum is here, or is it, when you say it's better at these things, is it here better or is it here better? I think it's pretty significant because of the root system, because of its cold weather tolerance, but I will say this, and it may sound strange, Platinum will use less water than most grasses, but it's not as drought tolerant as Bermuda. Ah, okay. Now, uh, historically, I think the ultra dwarfs were an improvement from the typical Bermudas we put mm -hmm. on putting greens in the past. Paspalum, I remember walking on a platinum green when we were poking around looking for the grasses for the Rio Olympics back mm -hmm. in 2014. And I can say from walking on it and watching us putt on it, it looked like a, a, a pretty serious playing quality condition. Some of the best I'd seen and certainly on warm season turf for sure. Um, talk about the playing quality you're getting from it, at least on the golf course. We're going to talk about some other venues. With those benefits, you get cloudy weather. In, in South Florida, even where it's going to grow really well, you get cloudy weather. Is that the big uh, game changer that's giving us the quality? How good is the playing quality? Well, it's this? like any grass. You have to manage it. You can't let it manage you. So if you don't manage an ultra dwarf right, you're not going to like it. With platinum, you put too much nitrogen on it. You don't groom it right. You don't verticut it. You don't top dress it. It's going to manage you. Huh. If you stay on top of it, it's a great putting surface. So as you've developed the acumen, the sort of ability to manage it, um, did you learn some of these things by mistake or are we doing plot research somewhere? Because I know you're a hands-on guy. You got collecting clippings before anybody was talking about collecting clippings. You remember you used to take those little jars mm -hmm. in all the time? I remember seeing that a long time ago. So are you the one sort of really saying here's what it is or is there some university research showing this as well? Uh, all three, other superintendents, trial and error, and the errors hurt sometimes and you, learn, you have to learn quick and university research, Good. so it's a three-legged stool. Okay, so the high nitrogen must come from what? Excessive organic matter buildup? Have you seen guys that, where you got, hey Tim, because you say reach out for help is one way to be a better manager. Somebody might have made that mistake, that, that sort of fraternity we have as superintendents where we can rely on each other for knowledge. Seems very important for this. Is the nitrogen the thing that declines the playing quality the quickest? The, it, it, you're better off treating platinum like a bent grass. Low nitrogen, if you, it's a warm season grass and that's what get people, that'll get people in trouble. 
too much nitrogen, you get a bigger leaf, you get more disease, more water usage. Uh, typically on a platinum green in a normal situation, you look at it three to five pounds of end of year. Okay, so, and, and for that's a what? About a 10, 11 month growing season? Well, yep, yeah, at least 10 or 11 months. 10 or 11 months, okay. So, you know, there's a lot of components that go into managing, but let's talk about the places, the golf courses. How many golf courses have planted this now? Uh, let's start around the world. Has it been, has it had a, a global reach, starting to have a global reach? Yeah, you've, you've got six of the top 100 Golf Digest courses are now in platinum. Huh. Uh, it's, it's going not just in golf courses around the world, it's going in soccer fields. Okay. Uh, cricket fields, I mean, it's just, a, it's managed right, it's a great turf grass. Okay, so before we came on the air, I was reviewing some of this with you, and I was asking about the venues, uh, especially the sporting venues, because we know many uh, major sporting venues are um, uh, coming, we're closing, you know, let's close everybody in so everybody's comfortable, but forget that there's something living in there that needs to get mm -hmm. uh, that sunlight. The, is, pass, is Platinum in some of these venues? Uh, Houston Astros, the Florida Marlins, the Atlanta Braves, which doesn't have a roof, and there's another club going to it. Okay. And again, it's because the players like the surface. Okay, well, I think the Houston Astros liked it pretty good. Yes. I don't think the pitching hurt, but I think the use, and they didn't spend a lot of, only three guys, this is the funny thing about baseball, right? There's only three guys making their living in the grass. Everybody else is in the dirt. But it must, you're going to take some credit for the Astros having a good season, huh? Well, I'm a Braves fan, so. Okay, I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> was it, uh, it, was it a new introduction? Because the Minute Maid Park's been there a while. How long Platinum been I out? think it's been there about six or seven years. Okay. And, and that's what encouraged the other clubs. The, the Marlins followed suit. And the Braves, because the players that played on it liked it so much, that even though the Braves stadium isn't enclosed, they still used it. Okay, so it has those abilities to adapt to those low light conditions. But of course, anybody who's you know paid attention to the turf grass business for the last couple of decades know the reason that Paspalum started to get traction was not that we needed another good grass to play golf course on, to play golf on. We needed a grass that could put up with what the challenges the environment and society is going to place on us in the future, especially when it came to the use of potable water. Let's take two minutes for the people who aren't here with us, never paid attention to Paspalum before. When you started playing around with an old collier, talk about how it became the grass of choice down there, because if people don't have Paspalum, they, Obviously, they're going to think about the latest variety, Platinum, but you want to make sure they're thinking about Pass Palum for the right reasons to begin with, yes? Well, we didn't have a choice. It was either Pass Palum at that time or nothing because the water quality was about one-fifth one to one-fourth ocean water with high bicarbs. Okay. And just a caveat here, if you're going to use a low-quality water, you better make sure you have a soil or a drainage system that can keep that moving because no, no grass, once you destroy the soil structure, it's not going to survive. That's exactly right. This is an oftentimes, con even if the grass could survive under pure ocean water, the soil would be virtually dead. Like the foundation on the house, you crack it, it's no good. That's right, and so and, and not an easy thing to fix, especially, you know, obviously our, our, our colleagues out to the west where they're metering the water and, mm -hmm. and, and, and getting uh, much more evapotranspiration because they don't get that rainfall. So they do get those, you know, salty, crusty soils. You have plenty of rainfall. You have, uh, if you don't have sandy soils, um, that water, because you're using such poor quality water, it'll start to accumulate. The inability to leach is not going to, you, you can't grow any grass if you can't leach the salts out. And pulse irrigation, big rains don't leach anything. You have to have pulse irrigation. It's the steady, frequent rains That's right. that really move salts. Right, so, but you can, you know, obviously you have to leach. They grow Bermuda grass where you leach. Mm -hmm. If you can leach, why would I pick Paspalum over Ultra Dwarf Bermuda? Well, first of all, every golf course is different. Right. Some people will buy BMW, some people will buy Mercedes Benz. Exactly There's no right. rider, you have to, it has to be site specific, not only for that micro environment, okay. but for the clientele and the ownership. Exactly some right. people just want a greener grass. Some people want faster greens. You can't boilerplate a decision on grass. At least I don't think you can. Right, and so, so but this grass has such, I don't want to say it, I'm going to, you tell me if I'm wrong. Would you call it unique management requirements? Not outside basic principles, but if you try to manage it like a warm season grass, you're going to have trouble. You're better huh. off managing it like a cool season grass. Huh. And when you say cool season grass as a lifelong warm season grass grower, what does that mean in your mind? Low nitrogen, uh, moderation when you're doing uh, maintenance practices, right. more intense practices in the summer, right. more maintenance in, in the season. Okay. All right. So 
again, I brought up the use using the potable water, uh, the non-potable water, the, the, salt, the, the poor quality water for growing past palm. That sounds like a benefit to the environment, benefit to the game of golf. If we can be that place that can be integrated into a wastewater treatment operation in, in some way, that's mm -hmm. certainly what Mr. Collier and everybody imagined they had to deal with out there was to use the Correct. golf course functionally in, in the constraints of the water that you had. I also heard you say low nitrogen, right? Correct. So obviously the less loading of the environment, when you say a cool season grass, you've got about a 10, 11 month growing season with a warm season grass, how much nitrogen are we talking about? Well, again, it depends on the size of the greens, the quality of the soil, the amount of play you've got. Traffic. But, but traffic, but tip, typically anywhere from three to five pounds a year on, okay. on the green surface. Okay, and metered out, I'm assuming, depending on how it's growing during the season, right? Correct. But, but the rhythm to it is like the Bermuda in the sense that there are periods of active growth where it just grows like the Dickens, and then periods where you know, like in Florida, when you're not managing a pest palm, you're managing a Bermuda, when the cloudy weather comes through, mm -hmm. when the cool weather comes through. Um, obviously, those are challenges that, you know, you're, maybe you're not adding nitrogen at that time. Even growth regulation might be important. Typically, you're using the granular when the grass is growing, you're using the foliar. I don't mean fertigation, actually spraying when it's yeah. not growing to bypass the root system. Okay. So, other environmental benefits. Can I use, if I had good water, can I use less of it? You can use less of it, but I want to be very specific. Be because of the root system, you can use less water. But in a drought, Bermuda is more drought tolerant because the defense mechanism is different than Paspalum. That's why on the interstates, Bahia grass Bahia is a Paspalum. Pas it'll, it'll be brown, you get water, it greens up. Exactly right. But with a finer texture grass, that's not exactly the case. So that plant, that platinum, will protect the root at all costs. Huh. So it'll actually sacrifice a leaf to protect the root. Okay. And so that's fairly unique strategy, and I think we've talked about the, the characteristics of the management, but ultimately it comes down to the person making the decision. What are the characteristics in your mind when looking at people all these years growing past Palum, maybe even Platinum? What, let's stay with Platinum. What are the characteristics that these people, that you see a good manager have when they're managing Platinum? They're not afraid to ask questions. Ask questions. They're not afraid to ask for help. They know when to ask for help, and they know where to ask for help. So, okay, it's when you don't know what to do, you have to wade through who you think can give you the right answer. How can you tell? Well, I you, mean, I know you, but you know, we've worked together a long time. I don't know anybody's grown past Palmas. There might be someone somewhere who's grown more, but that's the first thing you think, right? Uh, but how do, how do they, how, you want to give out your cell phone number? They can put it on a tagline here. There, there's a lot of guys now that have the experience, and I'll give you one example. Jeff Hood at Atlantis in the Bahamas has got Tiff Eagle Greens and Salam Grass. He's the expert on keeping past Palum out of greens because he's been doing it for 18 years. So for him, I've already called him. Uh -huh. How do you do it? So there's a lot of guys now that have niche experience with specifics on managing different varieties of past Palum. So how's it working at a club at Madeira with Platinum? How long you been open? Uh, we, well, the hurricane changed things a little bit. Uh, we, we opened the last course November 7th. The fairways and the roughs and tees are fantastic. The members love it. And they like the color. It stripes, it's yeah. green and the ball sits up on top of it. Okay, so it's been a success so far, because you left a, a pretty good gig there, over down at Old Collier, and I think a lot of people were taken aback when you did it too, because you know that was your heart, I know you long enough to know, you put your heart and soul into it, which it seems like is critical when you're managing a past palum. You really have to pay attention. I was saying earlier, you, know, you, you took clippings before anybody else was really paying attention to taking clippings. That's the kind of innovation, the ability to deal with innovation, that's what this is. It's innovation, grass innovation. Well, Frank, you know, what's unique about our business is you can call your fiercest competitor and they'll help you. Of course they will, yeah, especially, of course they will. And especially, I tell you, at the times I've traveled through Florida, the, the, the Brotherhood Fraternity of Superintendents in Florida is a unique one. You, you guys work a lot longer than many other people mm -hmm. in this country growing grass, so I know it's really stressful for you to do that, and Tim, Congratulations, and we didn't even have, we didn't talk about trains once, brother. That's no one right. knows we share this passion for the love of trains, and um, there's a great movie out uh, called The Station Agent. I don't know if you've ever seen it. This no. little guy is a real, he, 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 they film trains, you know, the stuff, the goofy mm -hmm. stuff you and I do. Thanks for joining us. Thank Congratulations you. on the USGA Green Section Award again. Con good luck with Platinum.
Thank you, Frank. Frank Rossi here at, uh, at the 2018 Golf Industry Show in San Antonio, Texas, on the GCSA TV live stage, brought to us in partnership with Lebanon Turf. We are going to look at the super dog story at the Honors Club. So that ought to be a fun video. We'll see you when you get back.